Hello, welcome to this video about my 1973 Dodge W200. So this truck, like most good things, has a story. This truck belonged to my grandfather who purchased it brand new in 1973. He was a colonel in the US Air Force and as such he moved around quite a bit. And so this truck spent a lot of its time in the northern areas including Wyoming. So it does have some rust on it, but all in all it's not too bad. The truck spent most of its life in California just sitting for the last 30 years or so. So my grandfather passed away about three years ago, but he always had a dream of restoring this truck. I also shared that dream, so when my grandmother was trying to get rid of it, I offered to take it off her, and then I found it like this. It was a little stuck in the mud, but everything was there, so over the next month I made trips in my free time to go work on it. And the fuel system was pretty bad. That was the last thing we had worked on it when my grandfather was still alive, but it was pretty bad. So I redid all the fuel system and we finally got it running. The truck has an original 360 small block with a two barrel carburetor. I rebuilt the carburetor and sort of tuned it. You could probably use a little more help in that area, but I tried. And after replacing the valve stem on one of the wheels and bleeding the brakes, I drove the truck home. A few months later, I left the country for a year. And when I came back, I picked up the truck with my brother and we took it back to my parents' place. I soon left the country again for another year, but now I'm back stateside and I finally have some time to get into this thing. So my goal with this truck is not to do a full nut and bolt frame off restoration, but to make it usable, safe, and a little more aesthetically pleasing. I'm learning a lot as I go here, but I hope you enjoy the process. So, this here is a probably dead battery, and this is my new battery tester, so we're going to give this thing a go and see how it does. I think it's pretty simple to use, you just, uh, <laughs> you just connect up the terminals. Somehow. And then this thing here powers on. And you got some options on there, like battery test. It's the one we want. We want a battery test. So you can select the different testing and basically amp rating standards for different batteries. So this one on here, it says it's a 550 cold cranking amp battery. So we will type that in. Select cold cranking amps. And we're looking for 550. Let's click enter and now it just does the test. So it says it is damaged. We should replace it, uh, which according to the instructions means it's like below 45% capacity. Uh, it's in the 19.17 volts. It's probably not enough to start a car, but it's worth a shot. So we're going to try and start this thing up. It hasn't been started in probably about nine months or so. Um, yeah, last time I left it for about a year and it started right back up immediately, which was kind of amazing. But uh, yeah, we'll see what we can get it to do. I don't think it's going to do anything. We don't have any voltage. Oh. Well, that's more than I thought. All right. So we'll try and hit it with a jumper box.
So I just got my jumper box hooked up here and got it turned on. That little green light should mean it's on. So we're going to try this again. Nope. Well, I think we'll just let that charge for a bit then. It's been charging for a couple minutes now. Let's see if this will do any more. Oh, that's a lot closer. Let's get some starting fluid in there. This thing will usually kick off pretty quick if it's got a little shot of starting fluid. Hey. <laughs> See what we get. Well, that is pretty dead. So we'll charge it some more. Cool. We're going to come here and try it again. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. that was, that was something that was closer. I think. This box isn't really charging the battery, it's just sort of helping out and delivering a big shot of current right when it's time to start the thing. So we'll turn this thing back on. I <laughs> used so much of the battery, oh my gosh. 25%. We'll give it another go. Hit it with one more shot of starting fluid too, because that tends to make things go a little better. Trying real hard. I bet taking the air cleaner off and giving that just a straight squirt into the into the cart would probably get it. Come on. There we go. Oh, the choke's open. That's kind of weird. Turn this thing back on. Somehow its battery life has increased. We'll try around some other stuff, see what happens. Now another attempt. Yeah, it sounds like it's just not getting spark, which could very well be. It's not kicking off anymore with starting fluid. So, 
Maybe I'll just hook up the battery to the charger. That could do it. Yeah, we'll try that. <laughs> so this battery is slow, but it's saying it's a 15% charge, but I'm thinking the battery probably doesn't have a lot more left in it, <laughs> but we hit the voltage button here, it's charging at 12.3 volts, which is a good amount, you know, it's enough to get us at least part the way to where we're going. If it were able to hold that voltage, we could probably get it started and going just fine. But, you know, we'll see. So I came back out here after charging this thing for quite some time, several hours, and I ran the test again just to see where it was at. So the numbers are a little different this time. It's coming up as being 35% damage, which I guess means health. Uh, yeah. Showing a lower internal resistance and more cold cranking amps and a 12.89 volts. So, I don't know exactly why it's different this time, but I think the battery needed to just be really well charged before it would work again. So, it's good to know. So, I'll probably keep charging it and come out and try it again later. So I'm back out here again. I already got this thing running. Um, I don't have footage of that because my camera stopped recording right before that happened. But um, we'll see if we can get it started up right now. The battery's in pretty good condition. Uh, last time I checked, it was a little over 13 volts. This is one of the only gauges in this thing that works right now, the alternator gauge. And it's showing a little, just a hair above medium. And that gauge is always on, so I think that means we're good. Um, yeah, I also took a minute to clean up in here the other day. I used this really cool chemical called 303 Aerospace Protectant. It's really cool. It freshened up all of the trim in here amazingly well, and all the rubber, and all this stuff. All that stuff went in the windshield. Windshield rubber still looks a little bit rough, but a lot better than it did. So. Yeah, let's give this thing a go, see if we can get a start. Started up pretty good. pretty well. The choke must have loosened up or something, because the choke was being kind of funny before. Close the door. Keep some fumes from getting in. <laughs> so this thing does not have a tachometer, but I just ordered one. I noticed right here, it's kind of funny, you can see it on the camera really well, but in person you can't. So there's a little circle right there, and behind it in the frame, behind the dash, there's like a perfect little spot to mount a two and five eighths inch gauge. So I thought maybe that's a good spot for attack. So I ordered attack, it should be here in a couple weeks, I think. Um, yeah, but everything is looking good. 
I don't think the oil pressure or temperature gauges work. Or the fuel gauge. <laughs> it's got a full tank of gas in it. Um, we are currently doing six miles an hour. Maybe. Um, so, yeah, that's happening. But yeah, the uh, alternator gauge works. And that's good. Yeah, I thought I'd show this. Show how it's all working together. I don't know how to go about fixing these gauges, but I would like to learn. So if anyone knows anything about that, please share. Oh, we got the radio here too. I forgot about this thing. What kind of stations do we have here? That's how that works. Um, yeah, the blower works, heater works, um, cargo lamp works. <laughs> the lights work, I mean some of them, the headlights work. Sometimes, I guess, one of those blinkers is on, I don't know, it's kind of weird, those need to get looked at. So I'm probably going to tear into all this and look at all that stuff after this. Yeah, I wanted to show you around the inside of the truck, wipers work, all that stuff. It'd be fun to get a better stereo unit in here. Um, I don't know if there's any value in these old ones. Uh, it's in pretty good condition. The face is just a little dirty, but um, yeah. I don't know if there's a market for those, but if there is, that'd be good to know. And I got a CD. It does not work, but it's there. And he got the mandatory trailer brake controller. Gotta have one of those. So yeah, that's the inside of this here uh, beautiful 73 Dodge pickup.